And with that, we've got Jason in Oregon. Hi, Jason. How's it going, Jason? How are you? Hi, everything's going well here on my end. Good, good. That's Help good. us wash this taste out. How's, uh, what would say. you like to talk about? So I recently uh, got married. and Congratulations. Uh, yeah, yes, and my wife and I, she, she was married before she married me. And so now I'm a stepfather. Okay, and cool. And my stepson, his name's Chris, he is three. And sometimes he cries. And I often think I, I need to repent for some of, the, some of my previous thoughts when I would see children screaming or crying. I would think, oh, those are bad <laughs> Sorry. Children. So um, when, yeah. when Chris, say, when he's uh, crying, it, I, I think, okay, this is probably how God must feel. He sees the human race crying. He sees them screaming. And atheists and non-believers will look around, or heathens, if you if you woo, call woo. yourself so. Sure. Yeah. They they look around and they see the crying, and they assume that God is not real, and this is wrong. Well, Jason. God well, let, well, let let me ask you, man. Well, um, if you had your child crying or in pain. Would you go to that child? You know, and I've thought about this. And with Chris, sometimes the best medicine or the best method or the best thing that that my wife and I will do is we will put him in his room mm-hmm. and it's called crying it out. We will yeah. let him sure. cry it out. If, you're, and, if, if your child was starving, would you let him cry it out? Well... Well, Chris eats. He's we we oh. take care of him. We so so it. that is a check in your favor because that already makes you better than your God. Let's try other things. If Chris needed to go to the hospital, right? It was seriously injured. Would you take Chris to the hospital, or would you let him cry it out? Well, reason would dictate the circumstance. Broken so leg. If yeah. I'm, well, okay, yes, bro- broken leg. Okay. Uh, what if what, what if we gave you magic powers, Jason? Right? Let's say I, I, that Chris I'm sorry. Oh, l- 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 let's it, just pretend I, that you have, have magic, magic powers, powers, right? Yeah. And in this uh in, in this okay. pretend, you know, in this in this hypothetical, um your son you can heal him. Uh had some debilitating illness, uh cancer or some other parasite, and you could snap a finger and heal your son. Would you? You know, I, I'm i tempted to say yes, but... but well, of I course you are, because you're a good parent. But it even gets better. Would you give your child that parasite? Well, Would you no, give your child but, cancer if you could? Mm-hmm. Would you starve your child if you could? Would you break well, their no. leg first? No, of course not. But, Which is why you are also better than your God. Right, Jason. Well, and I wouldn't. I'm even assuming that that your God is real because we're talking about the character of this God, Mm -hmm. right? If you believe that that God is all knowing, all loving, all caring, all powerful, right, then that God would do those things that you're doing. I don't even think that God exists, but if I went to the level of saying, okay, let's assume that God exists, let's take a look at its moral character, then what I would say there is that God is supremely immoral. That God is a thug and a monster. Right. And I think that that is absolutely true. And I think that you're better than that. And I, I appreciate that. I like that. It means you're a good person, Jason. Well, and, and I, you know, I, I wasn't expecting to be a father and now I'm a stepfather. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and right now, Chris and I, we, we have a good relationship and I have a good relationship with his mother. And, uh, but I, it's just the three of us. And my wife and I are thinking about having a second mm-hmm. God. You know, let's let's be honest. There are over seven billion people on this planet. If God were just solving J- problems, Jason, then Jason, then where would be the test? Well, I can tell you where, but hold on. The test would be would would not be relevant. Which is more yeah. important? Hold the on. Human beings are tested, and uh, and some of them get raped as children. Or that human beings are not, or murdered, or die at age two from cancer or illness but, or malnutrition, or that that doesn't happen, and oh, we missed out on a test. 
What is it that God can't know in his omniscience without testing human beings by putting them through suffering? And, and, well, and, and as you and answer, you, okay, Ro, Jason, I, I agree. Jason, you're going in and out. It sounds like you might yeah. be moving your mouth away from the microphone. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just sitting here in my oh. den. Oh, That's you're, okay. you're fine. No, no, the audio uh, was going audio, in and out, and yeah. it was hard to hear. Okay, so the, so the, sorry. I, I jumped in there a little bit aggressively, and I don't want you to feel like I'm, I'm mad at you. I just no. wanted to get the point out, which no. is... No, I, I, I don't sense that you're mad at all. Oh, but, good. That's good. But I, again, there are 7 billion people on this planet. I, I think if God were to go around, you know, writing every turtle, if he were going around fixing our problems, then I don't think we collectively would learn much of anything. Well, actually, let's test that, Jason. Um, I love going back to heaven and talking about heaven for this example. Do you think that there's free will in heaven? Do you think you can make any choices in heaven? You know, yes. You do? I, 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 okay. I believe there's a heaven, and I believe that we decide if we will go there. Well, All right. Do you hold believe on, that Jay. people can learn things in heaven? Well, th- th- I mean, th- well, that's even not necessary. Well, no, in the, in the same way that you are saying that people can learn things on earth. Well, I'm, I'm hoping to meet my grandparents and my great-grandparents who have died who are there now okay, but, and I will learn well, from them. Okay, so perfect. I do think they're... So, perfect. So, so Jason, um, we've gotten to the idea that you believe that there's a heaven, that in that heaven is the people that you love, that have died, that you get to see again, and that you have that free will and ability to make choices, right? Is there suffering and, in heaven? I would like... I would like to learn from Mark Twain. I believe that Mark Twain is at the feet of Jesus now, and I, I, I want to learn from Mark Twain as well. Sure, man. I, th- there are a whole lot of awesome things that, that you can put in heaven as an idea. That's, that's, that seems really nice. Um, but Jason, can – okay, so is there suffering in heaven? You know, broken bones, well, I, parasites. Been to heaven. But I'm, um, I'm, but I'm just taking what you think of it, right? Is there, you know, extreme have, pain and suffering and all that? No. Are there hurricanes in heaven? I have, I have a testimony that heaven is a time, well, it's uh, maybe not a time, but uh, a realm, I guess might be oh, a better word. But that's it, fine. It is a realm of peace and love and understanding and Wonderful. Yes, learning. I, I hope to learn. Wonderful. Jason, so we've established, hold on, we've established that there's free will, that choices are made, that you can learn, and that yes. there's no suffering in heaven, right? No, no suffering. Okay. No so, hurricanes, no so how come... No. So why so, would God ever subject the human race to suffering? For example, mass disease and hurricanes. Right, because you just gave us an, uh, a, a what you believe is God being able to create a place where people can make choices and learn and choose to do all of those things without suffering. I'm, were you asking a question? I'm, I, yeah. I guess I don't understand. So, sure. Wh- it, it sounds as though this call has been, well, bad things happen in the world but um, God cannot solve everyone's problem is sort of part of the underlying uh, message I'm hearing you say. You haven't said exactly those words, but I think that's the gist of at least part of what you're yeah. calling in to say. Yeah. And what we're saying is... That's not the whole kit in Caboodle, I, but... I, no, I, I oh, believe no. that. I believe that there's a lot more to it than that. I, I don't think you would have called in with two sentences and then, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, talked as long as, as we have if that was all you had to say. But... Um, if God is capable of creating a realm where human beings can learn and not suffer, why would he then create a realm where human beings suffer and learn? Well, I teach high school mathematics, and I, I could put it this way. School is a microcosm of life, uh, and school is necessary that we learn and and perhaps we can see that this planet and this plane of existence is the school uh, that our souls are here to learn. Uh, and then, of course, at death, we graduate. So Jason? Some, of course, will drop out. 
problem. So, so I think. Okay. So, so Jason, uh, I so think that. It, hold on. That hell, hold on. Yeah, it's okay. it's a tech problem. It's you know, yeah. his phone. Jason, um, so let's let's play with that analogy. But but first, let's say. This analogy, if we, when we're talking about it and examining how it applies, if we come to learn that, oh, wait, it doesn't actually describe the world very well, can we agree that we would set it aside? Right? So if we, uh, for example, if we had a bad analogy like, oh, life is like a soccer game and we figured out that, no, actually, there's no goalkeeper or whatever, we would set that analogy aside and find a different way of describing life? Can we do that with... You know, I'm I'm certainly open to a different right. analogy. So, so uh, what I would say if, is, if I can just, can I add just one item? Can of I course. tack on something to my analogy? Yeah. Jesus Christ would be the principal of the school. Mm-hmm. Uh, just so you know, or even the assistant principal, his his father would be yeah. the principal. And then the the administration is the Trinity, and the the all the angels sure. are like teachers. Yeah. Sure. I, I, I think it's, I think it's like an interesting and, and certainly poetic uh, analogy. But what I would say is if, if you saw a school where um, teachers and uh, teachers' aides and principals and the administration stood by at, in classrooms and in the food court and watched the children murder each other, I think you and I could agree that that would not be a very good school. Right or that they watched and oh. some people didn't get food and some people did, that the administration of that school would change how that school works to make it better for the students. You know, that's, that's a good response. I, I hadn't thought of that. And, you know, I, don't, I, I can't catch every misbehavior. And, that's true. And the, we're, the we're humans. We're not perfect. No. Yeah. But so, but if the if the idea is that there is a god that could catch every misbehaving and that would be perfect, right? The school is I mean this sort of sounds a little bit Orwellian, but the school has a, a an infinite number of security cameras looking at everything from every direction and the principal's, you know, brain is connected to it. So god can okay. see everything and it's a smart school. So God can manipulate the existence of desks and everything in every part of it. We're, we're stretching this analogy as far as it can go. But God is capable yeah, of yeah, even, you know, controlling a, a student's, you know, ability to stand up straight. He can wave his hand and then they freeze in time or, or whatever. Wouldn't you expect a principal that wanted human beings to learn and to not suffer to stop them from suffering, particularly when it meant that they wouldn't learn. And I think the point that we're making is no one learns anything if they get killed in a hurricane. Well, and I'm, I'm, I'm understanding your response. Your implication would be that our God is an incompetent principle or that Jesus is incompetent. And, and I, I would agree. I don't see that at all. I, I think that they, they are competent we could say omnicompetent if you'd like. Okay, so, oh, well, so here's what I will so, say, because so, actually, let me add something to this analogy. Let's say that you are told, no, there is a principal and a dean of students, we'll say, that's the, and that's God, yeah. the Father, and the Son, whatever. The administration okay, exists. Yeah. They've come out and they've addressed the students many, many generations ago, and the students have carried this legend on, but the principal's office is locked. Right, you don't get to go there until you graduate, right? Okay. And people are saying, "Oh no, the principal has an infinite number of security cameras, and you know, uh, uh, unbelievably sophisticated technology such that they can affect anything that happens in any classroom at any time. They're there, they're watching, and they want you to learn." And if you pray, you know, and if you speak out loud in, in a specific way, they listen and they're good and they want good things to happen to you and they have a plan for your education. If I looked around in a classroom and I saw that that classroom operated exactly how you'd expect it to if it was run by students without intervention from teachers, do you think it would be reasonable in this hypothetical school for me to assume well, there isn't a teacher intervening here and there's not a principal bringing order. The discipline comes either from students organizing themselves 
without reference to the principal or there's a lead student that's saying, no, the principal wants you to do this, you should do it anyway, and they listen to that. If I saw that, I would go, well, I don't see any reason to believe that a principal exists, but I think that we should all find a way of working together and learning. We have these textbooks here, let's learn from them. And that is effectively the atheist position. I don't know whether or not there's a principal or a principal's office, and so I'm not going to cry out for help from one. Okay, so in other words, that was you will turn to probably. your fellow classmates or your fellow schoolmates and seek help from them if mm -hmm. there's, say, a murder in the hall yeah. or yeah. somebody's chewing gum. Well, if you don't see any teachers or, or yeah. a principal handy, you know, n there's yeah. no administration that you can find. My rule would be well, you can chew gum as long as you pick up after yourself. But okay. <laughs> sorry, that always annoyed me in school. I don't want it in anyone's hair. I said ears. I meant hair. Sorry, uh, you cut out there for a second. What about the hair? Oh, I, that I just don't want gum in the carpet, and I don't want it in hair. <laughs> yeah. So it, in my school, I would let the students chew gum. That's probably and, true. And I so. think I think God, our principal, I think he's quite reasonable. He lets us chew gum. He lets us. Uh, communicate with one another in the classes. But well, I, I, Jason, but, the, 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 but okay. I would also say that God allows a murder to occur in the hallway. Actually, it's worse than that. Yeah. It's I, worse than that because well, if you think that your God knows everything that's going to happen, do you? I don't want to put words in your mouth. Do you think that your God knows everything that's going to happen? I do. Then your God I, I put a murderer has. in the classroom. Right. He, knowing sorry, that that murderer that would murder. Well, he he has an all-seeing eye and an infinite foreknowledge. Mean, of course, he would be able to see. No, oh, yeah, and, and of course, you know, if you think that every student is there because the principal chose them, then you know that that God is absolutely responsible for the terror and horror that would happen, right? I, that's why I think that Jamie's example is absolutely perfect because it's far more likely that there's not a principal than that there's some megalomaniac who's watching and recreating Lord of the Flies every day. It's, it's just a whole lot less likely. The world's likely. not And Jason, I, I've got to tell you, man, you need to give yourself more credit. Yeah. The fact that you would reach out and stop a student from injuring another makes you better than your God. The fact that you would feed well, your child, believe. the fact that you would feed yeah. your child when they cried out yeah. it means, makes you better than your God. The means, fact that you would take them to a hospital yeah. makes you better than your God. Yeah, you intervene to help other people more than people, more than... God evidently does. Well, you feed people that you know, God I'm didn't. A, you help giant. people that God didn't. You would heal people that God hasn't. Well, I and I think I was going to say I'm a proponent of science. I think God has given us the sciences. Of course you do. If if, if your yeah. God existed, your God would have created everything, right? Yeah, including the diseases we study. Sure. But, um, your God is saddled I'm, I'm with all of that. I'm glad to hear that you're a proponent yeah. of science. I think we can agree on that as but it's a good thing. I, I, the students I'm, should learn. And, and, I, and, and I think we and are. I won't, Sorry? I, I won't come, in to, come to Rob's defense because I think quite a few people uh, indulge in self-abuse, Christians and Catholics and, and, and many others. Yeah. I, I, oh I, my gosh, are we going back to masturbation? I, uh, it, you know what? It just it just crops up in the minds of the people often. Um, oh, so, what, I, what I will say is, I, ever. I, I can say I agree with you if, uh, and I, I hope I'm not reading into your meaning here, if you're saying it is a part of human nature to... Well, it, it is, and, and I think it's sinful, but well, for me to tell you that I've never indulged would be a lie. I think Rob himself masturbates. I think that's day, highly likely. Every other day. Yeah, and I'm if he and if he's calls it self abuse, I'd say he needs to practice more and and, and probably well, try and um, well, but we but, could call it something else. But yeah, but, but either he's, he's way, either way, um, you know, if that God existed, he gave you all the tools to do it and in the motivation to. So uh, again, that would just kind of make that God a jerk. <laughs> but um, so I, again, we're we're, we're talking about. Yeah, but, yeah, that's and not, it's an interesting in. problem of evil, yeah. and and that is what it's it is. It's the problem of evil. I'm, I'm sorry, we were all talking at once. I apologize. No, oh, I've talked I... over you too. Um, uh, you go ahead, and then I'll and then we can wrap up this call. I, 
I said I said that I needed to go, uh, but oh, okay. I appreciate that both of you gentlemen uh, took my call, that you allowed me to reach out and, and express my ideas. And it's okay if we are at an impasse and if we don't agree. I'm 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 almost certain you boys are familiar with the comedy of George Carlin. Oh uh, yeah. Yes. And, mm -hmm. uh, probably not my favorite comic because he was so profane, but. In defense of masturbation, it's my understanding that George Carlin said if God did not want us to masturbate, he wouldn't have allowed our arms to reach that part of the anatomy. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we'd all be T-Rexes. And, and, and you'll have to look up the quote. That was a paraphrase. That wasn't no, I, verbatim. I love it. All right, Jason, but, thank you for calling you, in, buddy. Thank you, and feel free to call back as well. I think we had a good discussion. We'd, we'd be able to have a, a, yeah. a oh. one. And I'm here to I'm here to listen. I'm here to you know express myself, share yeah. my testimony of the everlasting blood of the Lord. That's so gross. I'm, I, well, the blood part is. I, so I, yeah. Thank you for taking my call. Yeah, Absolutely, thank you for and in. Um, yeah, I, I I'm just going to end this conversation out by saying, uh, Jason. Um, I think that there are consequences to these discussions and I really don't think that everyone's opinion is equal, mm -hmm. right? Because I think that if you're telling somebody that they can't touch themselves or you're saying that, um, you know, well, you, you're just going through the test right now. Uh, you're not you, – you don't graduate until you die. Then you run the risk of people not being able to tell the people that they love that they love them before they pass because you'll just get the chance to see them again. And Jason, I'm going to leave you with a quote. Neil's in in our live okay. chat. Uh, uh, gave a quote, and it is, religion was invented when the first con man met the first fool. That was by Mark Twain. Oh, yes. That yeah. was by Mark it's Twain. It's attributed to Mark Twain. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, feet of God. Thank you. Uh, anyway, take care. I actually would like to respond to that quote. Hmm. Uh, nope. No, no, I know. Like, I know, the, but there's this idea that oh, it must have been started as a con. Like, no, have no. you ever just? But you I, don't have to go to children. You don't have to go to people that don't. You can just talk to other adults and just see superstitions form. There's it's either it's either UT or uh, Southwestern. It's one of the colleges that I went to. There's a superstition that if on your way to take a test you see a squirrel, that that's good luck. Okay. That's not based on anything old. That's human minds now in our super educated. Sorry, I bump into this. Oh, the ancient people, they no. think so much differently than we do. No, you've got the same monkey brain that they had yep. and you're not being aware of it makes it much more dangerous for you to think about things. We are aware I'm of shaking. it. shaking. We're not outside of it. Uh, Stephen Brewer Stop. donated $20. <laughs> 